everyone, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another tutorial. Now in the last one I did when I colored the girl, I sped it up a lot and a lot of people wanted it slower. So for the boy, I have slowed it down quite a bit. It's only about two times the original speed. So we're at almost a half an hour video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we're starting off with sepia and I'm just going in and adding in the darkest highlights or the darkest shadows on his face, pardon me. You'll see I come in right now with the black pencil because I mustn't have inked his entire ear, so I just drew it in with my black colored pencil. When I finish these images, I didn't record that part, but when I finish all of the images, I take a very sharp black pencil and I reinforce all of the black stamp lines because I didn't do it as a no lines coloring. I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about with you guys for a half an hour, but we're going to see if we can make this work. <laughs> When I'm going around, sometimes I'll add in, like you can see there on his elbow, I kind of pulled that dark out just to give the elbow a little bit of a crease and make it slightly more lifelike. It's definitely not anything that's needed to be done. I just tend to do it. Oh, moving around a lot. Sorry. So I turn the paper as I color just to make things easier. Part of the reason is it's easier for me. The other part is if I keep my hand at the bottom of the screen there, I'm always... I'm, most of the time, you guys can see exactly what I'm doing with my pencils. I still have a bit of a cold. I can't seem to shake it. It's that time of the year. First day of fall was yesterday, so. <laughs> now I'm coming in with dark brown, and I go right over top of that sepia, and I pull it out slightly. But I'm always going back over top of those darker colors in order to blend them together. Working on his nose, around onto his neckline. You can see I kind of pull that line of his neck out to give it a little bit of definition from the neck so that it doesn't look like his face is flat. And I start to outline the eyes. I will go in and add whites to his teeth and to the whites of his eyes as well. carrying on and just following it all the way through the image. The bonus in working with colored pencils is that they don't dry on you. This is light umber. They don't dry out on you like your Copics. You want to keep working wet on wet so you want your ink to be wet as you're blending it into the other colors. With your colored pencils you can go so far and you can walk away. Like there's points where I'll record part of this at like six in the morning before I go to work and then when I come home at five and I get my son to bed I'll finish recording it at eight o'clock at night. I do enjoy that fact that when I sit down and start coloring a certain part I don't have to finish it in that one sitting. Especially being as colored pencils take a long time I put you know two to three coats or two to three layers of color on this and that's just because this is craft paper and it doesn't have a ton of tooth to it. It's a very slick smooth paper. So once I get to that third layer, I, the paper just won't take any more pigment. Um, the paper I am using is Nina Desert Storm 80 pound cardstock. I'll have the link to it in the description box below the paper that I like to use for my colored pencil and craft. Now I'm going in, this is peach. I know when I show it, you can see the number in the French version of the name because it's so short and I just haven't sharpened another one. I have more in my bag. I always have spares of the colors I use lots of. Like now when I sharpen my next peach one, next time I go to the city, I'll pick up another one. Just so I always have an extra because I don't go to the city all the time. And it sucks to have to order it and wait like three weeks for it to show up in the post. So again, just blending everything out slightly further. Over top of everything else, just to give me a nice smooth blend. I've done this entire image, um, this is light peach, I've done this entire image with Prismacolor pencils. Lots of people have them in their stash. They are a very great pencil. Um, they're not my favorite. They tend to have, the leads tend to be crooked inside of the wood casing. They break when I sharpen them. Sometimes I have to fight with them and I sharpen half a pencil away, but they're cheap. In, in terms of an artist grade um, colored pencil, you can get them for like a dollar something here in Canada a piece um, I also use Faber-Castell polychromos which are considerably more expensive they're an oil-based pencil so they're a little harder lead I love them oh now I'm going through with eggshell and I'm just 
carrying it out into the rest of the image. I didn't use white in the face on him like I did on her, just to give him a slightly different skin tone. Um, but yes, my polychromos, I'll do a video with those coming up shortly here. Um, they're an oil-based pencil, so they have a harder lead. And they don't, they're not, they're not as waxy and soft as the Prismacolors are. I also have a set of um, Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. I love them. They are like the holy grail, but they're like $5 a colored pencil, and I love them. And I will do a video with them coming up. I'm still getting used to them. They're a newer purchase for me. So I have a couple new new mediums coming that I'm going to get to show you guys pretty soon that have been super fun, and I'm finally to the point where I feel like I can share them with everybody and have a have an in, uh, slightly intelligent opinion on them. So I'm just starting right over at the beginning again, and we're doing the sepia again. And this time I'm pushing a little bit harder, and I'm reinforcing those lines now that I have all my shadows and everything situated where it's going to be. I don't use real hard pressure, like I'm not pushing as hard as I can on that pencil because I want them to keep a nice sharp tip. Just because the images are so small to give me the, the detail I want to achieve. onto his feet and his other leg. Now it looks like I'm looking at it going, what didn't I do yet? <laughs> Which is probably what happened. Outlining his sandals. Oh, my glasses are still in the way. I've, I think I've fixed my issue with where I had my camera for not getting my head in the shot as much anymore. Which is good because nobody needs to see my my hairline because it's usually in a ponytail when I record in my bright pink glasses. Again, it's just the same process as before and you just keep repeating, blending over top of the sepia and pulling it out just slightly further into the face. around those eyes giving them more dimension and the nose so um before I sped this up to two I think I did two two and a half times the original speed um it was about an hour and seven minutes of full-time coloring just to color him so like I said, whereas I could do this image in probably 15-20 minutes with my Copics, it takes a considerably longer amount of time with colored pencil, but the look is completely different as well. I also want to do some Copics on craft. I think that would be fun. Maybe I'll record that this weekend. Anyway, rambling and talking to myself. <laughs> While I sit here and record this, my cat is sitting on the couch staring at me. Like I'm having a conversation with him. Little does he know I'm not even speaking to him. <laughs> Random fact. So this is the light umber. And like I said before, we're just following everything and tracing it out or blending it out slightly further. Always going back over top of those previous colors just to give us a nice transition so we don't end up with any harsh lines. There's a fly in here and he's driving me crazy. I will get my fly swatter as soon as I'm finished this. So if you've been over to, if you're a follower on my blog or been over to my blog, you've already seen the completed card with this image. Um, I will put part three up yet this weekend, which will be doing the background that was done on the card. So that's the sky and the clouds and the grass. Now Peach. So that's all been recorded, but the card did go live yesterday, I do believe. Today I have a different one, but it's the same craft on colored pencil on craft. So the link to my blog, my Etsy store, 
Um, these stamps, the craft paper, and all of that will definitely be down below. Carrying on, blending everything out. Then the light peach. I always find when I get to this stage and I get to the point where the skin's done, I kind of look at the image just against all the other craft paper because there's no color anywhere else. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that. And it always comes together in the end. So when you do a piece of a stamp or a piece of an image and you get it colored and you kind of look at it compared to either all the craft or all the stark white or whatever tone of paper you're coloring on, finish it. And the more you finish and the more you complete and the more you practice, the better you'll get. Eggshell is our final color here. Um, it's taken a long time to get to the point where I am. Lots of hours. Lots of... Lots of images that will never be put onto cards. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a video for you guys where I show like my reject images and my images that I've binned and just a bunch of different stuff. I'll pull out some old, some old pictures of cards I did way back when I started. Might have to do that. So now we're going into his hair. I'm starting in with the black and I'm just blocking in where all of his hair is going to go. So where I'm going to add the extra strands, always following the artist drawn lines because they give you the direction in which the hair is going to go. So I'm just adding in all of that, all those extra lines, giving the hair lots of texture. And when I pause, I'm just kind of looking at it going, hmm, where else do I need to add these? And then that little bottom piece is undercut there. Then this is a 70% warm gray. And I'm going right over top of those black lines and I'm blending them out a little bit further. When I finish the first coat on his hair, it looks really bad. Really bad. I didn't know if I was going to be able to salvage it, but... I find that all the time when I do colored pencil hair until I go in with the second, if I'm only doing two coats or the third, like get to that final, final layer of color. I'm never happy with the hair until it's done. So you just kind of have to push through it and go, well, we'll see what it looks like when it's finished. So we just keep carrying on and pulling it out. This is, I didn't hold this one up. This is the warm gray 50%. Sorry about that. I even remember when I filmed it, I wasn't sure if I held it up to the camera or not. I'm like, I must have. Apparently not. So this is 20%. Again, in the warm gray family, I used all warm grays for this one. I use the French grays a lot. I need to um, replenish my stock of French grays. The last time I was in the art store, they didn't have them, so... So we go through with that and then we go back to the black and I'm just going to go through again now and I'm adding, I'm putting it in dark this time. I'm not just lightly coating it. I'm going in and I'm putting in those black lines nice and solid so that they're going to be where I want them to be. And you can see how when I'm working, I'm turning that piece of paper all the time just to make it more comfortable and to make sure you guys can see what's going on for the most part. Darkening up that root line and pulling out where the hair is going to fold and where I want all of those little strands of hair to be. But I love these images from CC Designs. These are the Roberto Rascals for Seasons Boy and Girl. I do hope 
Christine gets together with him and does more of these where you get like four boys in a set in a certain theme. Like this one was four seasons, but it would be really fun to have like, you know, hockey, skating, lacrosse and soccer, or hockey and lacrosse and baseball and, or whatever. Right. And then the girl version as well. I just think it makes the sets really, really versatile. I know it's definitely a must have this set. It's one of the few that when you say you can use it all year round, you mean it because it's got all four seasons in it. Oh, I'm so not funny this morning. So now I'm going in with the 10% here. I did the 70 and the 50. I think I missed recording some of that. I'm sorry. But now I'm going in with the 10 and I'm blocking in where the lightest points are going to be. So this is where the hair's texture is really going to start to come out and you're going to see a lot of highlights in it. I'm keeping a very, very sharp pencil when I do this. So you can see how those light points just start to pop as I trace over them and make them more crisp and defined. And there you have it. Now I've got my black pencil. Oh no, one more coat. Alrighty then. <laughs> I thought maybe that was all I did. Apparently not. So again, I'm going over those darkest areas. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through with all the colors again or just the black. I might have just thought it lightened up a little too much. And white. Oh, yeah. So that was it for the hair. Now I'm just adding the whites to the eyes, and then I'm going to do his teeth as well. I just, it was starting to bother me looking at this image, and he had brown eyes and brown teeth. So... So there's the whites of the eyes and his white teeth. Now I've got indigo blue and I'm going to start on his shorts. So again, adding in, you can tell by the artist on lines kind of where the pants fold around the, I guess the groin area and then underneath where the shirt folds over it inside of the legs, right? Where the pants have their seam or are cuffed up depending on the way you color them. So now this is Copenhagen blue. And just going over top and slowly blending everything out. Working extreme with an extremely light hand on my first coat on everything. This is denim blue. Mediterranean blue. Sometimes I don't hold those pencils up long enough for everybody, so I hope it helps if I say what color I'm going in with next. So this is light cerulean blue. And then white. So that kind of blocks in all of my my lights and my darks. Now I'm going in with black. I love using black for shadows on my colored pencil pieces. I know lots of people say black is you shouldn't blah blah blah. Well I like it and I use it so and it's art and it's coloring and it's my rules and if I like it I'm going to use it. You don't have to. So just darkening up those shadows. Now I go in with that indigo blue. And slowly blending over top of everything and working it out. Copenhagen blue. That's another one that's getting pretty short and you can only read the French words. So if you can't speak French, you might not know what it says, although it's fairly obvious. But yeah, it's Copenhagen blue. Then it's Mediterranean blue. And 
And I'm going to sneeze. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Oh, that hurt. I missed what color this was. <laughs> sorry about that. So now the white. Add in the highlight. And then I think it gets one more coat yet. Or one more layer, I should say. So yeah, back in with the black. Now those shadows are going to get nice and dark on this coat. Or this layer. I must have been painting something. I paint for a living. Like residential and commercial property. So it was probably just after I got home from work and I had started supper. Because I usually shower after supper. So. That's why there's paint on my hand. Because there's always paint on my hands. And then this is indigo blue. I didn't hold it up this time. I apologize for that. I'm carrying on getting those shadows nice and dark. I'm definitely going to do like I did a card earlier. I don't think I recorded it for video, but there's a card on my blog where I did, um, I think they were the fall boy and girl. So I definitely have to do like the spring and the winter ones yet. Cause I really love these images. I think they're splendid. Copenhagen blue. So when you take your time and slowly build up those layers and build up those colors and get those shadows nice and dark and those lights nice and light, um, everything looks so pretty when it's finished. I love it. Just take your time. It's supposed to be relaxing, right? Like you, you color for fun and you do it because you enjoy it. So you're not in a hurry. Spend an hour, two hours on an image. I do it all the time. <laughs> and then wipe. Nope, nope. This is light cerulean blue. See, I couldn't get it to focus. It was arguing with me. And then white, and that should be done for the pan for his shorts. Next up, we're going into his shirt. So I have mineral orange. And I'm going to go in and start mapping out where the darkest points are going to be. So I'm following those artist drawn lines there around the bottom because it looks like his shirt is kind of rolled underneath, right? Um, adding one in up top there. There is a slight fold in the shirt. I just extended it slightly. Tops of his shoulders. I'm just deciding and kind of making it up as I go along where I think the darkest places on the shirt's going to be. And then his sandals are the same color as well. Then we have goldenrod. Just working those out. We're almost done this image, this part of the video. I'll do the voiceover for the other one this afternoon and get it up for you guys tomorrow. Hopefully this one will go up today, so. This is yellow ochre. I love this color. This pencil's gorgeous. And I'm not usually a yellow person, but I think this one is just stunning. I like those earthy yellows and colors like that, I guess. <laughs> Probably because it's fall. And then this is jasmine. And then white. Like I said, I enjoy adding lots of, I enjoy adding the white and the black just to make the lights really light and the darks really dark. Oh, sorry. I moved you guys on accident. Now I'm going in with black. So I'm going to go put those darkest shadows in again with the black. When I do it with that, like my darkest color first, if I want something to change a bit, it's really easy to do. So I always wait until the second coat to go in with the black and do all of my shadows in the black. Make sure I'm happy with them. If there's anything I want to change, I can change it. So I'll put all of those in. And the 
come back to mineral orange. That's just me. I don't know if you guys can hear that noise in the background. It sounds kind of like a wind. My son left the PlayStation on. Before he went to school, goldenrod. And the only reason he was using the PlayStation before school is because he uses it for Netflix. We don't have cable in my house. Um, back in with the black on his sandals because I forgot to put it there. I was very confused why I grabbed black for a second until I saw his shoes. So it'll be mineral orange for his shoes. So I'm just going to carry on and finish blending all of that out. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe. I will be doing a giveaway for my 30th birthday in November. Um, like it if you enjoyed the coloring. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you guys like the slower speed, if you prefer the faster speed. I'm definitely going to try and do a balance of both because people seem to kind of go both ways on that. So I think that's going to be the plan. Hopefully we'll see what happens. But... Um, it's only the colored pencil ones that end up so long because they take me so much longer to color. So, but I would definitely love to hear from you again, blog, Etsy, link to these stamps, um, the craft paper I use, all of that will be down below and I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.